Hello pilots and paddlers, welcome back to my channel. I say pilots and paddlers because once again I'll be posting this on both of my channels. Right, first of all, this, <laughs> the, it might wobble, this, from time to time the camera might just have a little wobble because of the way I've got it mounted. I've actually got the camera connected to uh, the table here and the table is not that secure so I'm going to try not to wobble it but we're not going to be at this point for too long anyway but I just thought I'd disclose that right before we get going you can see I've got the DJI Osmo Action 3 to show you today right but before we get going remember this camera right the Sephora Action Camera SF530 Remember that, because that's what I'm actually filming with right now. But I've got something to mention about that later on in the video. Okay then, right, as you can see, I've uh, got the Action 3. So, what I'm going to do is, I am not planning on doing an in-depth full review. There's plenty out there. This is going to be my opinion, as in what I think. So, what I'll do is I'll open it up and tell you what I think, all right? My first initial impressions. Then we'll do a jump shot seven days into the future. After I've tried it all out and everything, I'll tell you if there's any good bits or bad bits, in my opinion. Okay, let's just get her open then, because I'm actually myself dying to find out what it's like in here. And if I can... See, I'm trying to hold it up in the air so the table don't wobble, but uh, might not be able to do a lot about that. Right, there we go. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm well impressed with the the feel, the build quality. Right, so what I'm going to do now, now you've had a quick little look at it, so to speak. You have to, just in case you don't know, what you need to do is uh, download the DJI Mimo app. There's probably some sort of, in these instructions, Action 3, probably some sort of link telling you how to download it. I think that's it, actually. All right, you know, these QR codes or whatever. But if you just go on Google, all right, don't bother looking for it on Android, uh, what's it called that app shop thing just go on google type in uh, dji mimo m i m o app and you'll be taken straight to it and follow the on screen instructions but yeah so i'm just going to Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, orgasmic. But yeah, that ring, that rubber ring's on there quite tight. Now, I won't be using ND filters because it's somewhat... It's not something I rush out to buy with a decent camera. I always find, depending on what you're doing, if you're a professional photographer and stuff like that, then you're using your ND filters. But for me... For sort of, for want of a better word, because I'll be using this mostly on my kayak, right? That's what I mostly got it for. Because I wouldn't be using this on my planes or out like that, right? Because I'd be too worried about it getting smashed up, right? That's where like the camera I'm shooting with now comes in because it's a hell of a lot cheaper. But we'll talk more about that later. So right, yeah. So there it is then. All right, I've got it all out. You've. Uh, seen everything you get with it in this uh, combo set uh, and what I'll do now is I will just uh, do a jump shot seven days into the future after I've uh, sorted out the Mimo app played about with it learnt the functions took some video footage to show you messed about with it and just so I can tell you what I really think Okay then, right, uh, I'll see you in seven days. Jump shot. Hello there. Right, 
it's about half seven in the morning i'm just having a coffee i'll just watch the video back because i'm going to post it today and i thought i'll just watch it back in case i made a mistake about something well i forgot to mention which i should have mentioned really i didn't pay for this camera it was sent to me right but i'm still going to give an honest opinion in fact right remember i've just watched the video so i know what i say in fact i even mentioned in it about buying something different for certain reasons which are about two three hundred quid cheaper you know what i mean so it's still still going to be honest with you i'm not just going to say oh it's brilliant because it, it was free you know what i mean i'm still going to be honest with you and i can't call it a review because uh it's just my opinion right about this right and certain little things that you might not have seen before but i just sort of jumped straight in here and tell you that because i didn't mention it at all in the video so i'll link it in near the beginning while i'm actually looking at it on the bench so to speak i'll do like a little jump shot into the future okay then let's get back to it anyhow it's a great camera by the way it's great <laughs> okay back to the past jump shot okay then right we're back and i know i said i was going to wait a week right to mess about and find, figure out the functions and stuff but it's only been a couple of days and uh i've figured it all out what i need to do and uh, i've done some tests to show you and also at the end of the video i'm going to give you seven reasons why i think this is the best camera you can buy at the moment even better than the new gopro 11 black all right but that's at the end of the video even though some of you may jump to the end to watch it but that's up to you you'll miss all the good bits right so what have i figured out what have i learned now this was going to be just a quick review of what i think but i'm about to turn it into uh, more of a demonstration and how to use certain things because I've, I was looking on YouTube and a lot of people say yeah and if you swipe here and you can do that and you can do that but I wanted to actually do it as a, a slowly might take five minutes step by step what every little function does and how to access stuff okay right so let's first of all turn it on all right press and hold I put this little tea towel down here just to rest it on. All right, that's all that that's there for. I'll keep picking it up from time to time anyway. Right, I tell you what, let's see if we can move this camera down a little bit more so you can see better. All right, I'm hoping as I'm looking here. Yeah, right, I've got that camera on the arm. I think I showed you it at the beginning. If I move that there, now uh, hopefully that's in shot. Right, uh, top left you can see that's your SD card information. All right, now special there. Top right is your battery information, but if you tap on that, it'll give you a percentage, like that says 43%. All right, uh, I'll tell you what. We'll do it this way the middle left tap on middle left that will show you what you've recorded and things like that which at the moment i haven't got anything on because i've just downloaded what i've been recording so can't show you anything at the moment because i've just been downloading it okay bottom right you press and hold and then your zoom comes up and you can zoom in just by sliding your finger and then zoom out just by sliding your finger and when you get your right foot leave it alone you can tap the side but leave it alone and after a second or two that will vanish so that's your zoom right now it has a quick select button on the side and everybody was ranting raving about it oh you just press it and and it changes and now personally I can only see that being, oh, I'm sorry, I ain't got the camera locked in one position, so it, it can change different angles, you see, the settings, but that's another story, that's not important, that's one thing, I'll show you that. Yeah, uh, yeah, the button, yeah, if you press the button, right, you can... Photo, video, slow 
lotion. Right, go through all your different things. All right, let me just straighten that image up again. However, if that's on your crash helmet or something, right, yeah, I can see you using it. However, it, all you need to do is touch the center of the screen and move your finger left or right, and that stuff comes up, that information, and you can switch between. All right, now, on here, these are your, I think it's called quick switch. You, all right. Yeah, I've got camera, video, slow-mo and hyperlapse or time warp and on each individual one, like I've selected camera there, at the bottom, you see the picture of the camera on the bottom left, but at the bottom if you swipe up you can change your aspect ratios of the camera as in 4.3 or 16.9. You can also have your countdown to before the camera takes the picture personally. Yeah, I can understand if you want to run behind the camera and take a selfie type thing. So that, that's fine. I'm not going to knock it. Right. And on video. Right. Now, I'm just sure. Remember, you just touch the screen, move it left or right, and you get to them quick settings. On video, if you swipe up. Now, this is where on the top, you can change your resolutions. So like you can go all the way down to 10, 1080p, which we all used to use many, many years ago. All, right, all the way up to 4K43, but I have mine on 4K169, which is a wide view. All right, and at 30 frames per second. But you can mess about with your frame rate all the way up to 120 frames per second. But I leave mine on 30 now at this point in the top left if i tap top left this is where you can loop your recording so you've only got a small sd card or something like that i don't know but after say five minutes or whatever it'll just loop and stuff but uh, i have mine turned off all right the top right is where you'd set like your rock steady so if you're running and filming yourself and stuff which I could do with this camera because I can see the camera that I'm filming with now is shaking about like mad on this table still the same problem but no and there you can uh, select your like your horizon balancing your horizon steady you do have to change the frame rate for horizon steady but personally I won't be using them I'll only be using rock steady or you can turn everything off and just have it completely raw and everything but yeah, so that's that. When you're on video, you just slide up and you get into them settings there. Okay. Right, over on the right in the middle, if we tap on that, this is where you get into some exposure settings. Now, I, I'm not big on messing about and doing all different exposure levels and changing all sorts of different things. So I leave mine on auto. Like the white balance, I'll leave that on auto white balance. The colour format, I may change that from time to time to D-Cine or normal. The D-Cine is easier or gives you more options when you're editing. But if you don't like editing, right, just leave it on normal. Field of view speaks for itself, FOV. Right, field of view, it's on standard. If you switch, scroll up to ultra wide, that isn't, and believe me, that really is ultra wide. I've got a shot to show you later on. If I go to wide, oops, very sensitive, that wide, it tells you in the bottom left, in the top left, I should say. All right, it's advising you to use this angle when you're underwater because it helps with uh, the reflective surfaces and distortion. Right, so they're advising you to use the wide when you're underwater with your camera. Ultra wide whenever and standard whenever. Now, just a man of standard for now. Now, you can't see it, but there's a microphone in the middle there. You can't see it, but if you tap in the middle, you get to your microphone. And here you can select stereo or mono. I've selected stereo. Here, noise wind reduction, I've got that turned on because when I'm using this on my kayak, it will be windy. If I'm using it on a boat, on a boat, on a plane, it will be windy. Uh, but 
to be honest I'll mostly use this camera on my kayak yeah, because the camera I'm shooting with now is so bloody good right? and it's a hell of a lot cheaper that's the one I put on the plane right? uh, the front this is your microphone still now you can have your front just your front microphones recording right? or you can have for want of a better word like a surround sound microphone uh, or off obviously but uh, what happens there is you've got it how can I explain if you so you're in a group of people talking then you'd have it you wouldn't just have the front on you'd have all the microphones turned on you know what I mean and then top left oh we've already done top left your top right your pro if you go into that now you can start changing more different settings but uh, yeah that's something you can mess about with if you're into them sort of settings me personally I'm not so I think that's the full front screen we've covered there so now I will first of all I'll mention this bit the front the back screens on the front screen is off I have set it this way so there's only one screen on at a time now if I swipe up or down or it's because I've got the camera till again fast swipe up all right now the front screens on but the back screens off okay and that's the way I've got it set up you can still sorry you can still use all these functions all right on this screen all right it's still touch screen which is awesome and at the moment all right uh, well GoPro don't have it, nobody has to the front screen as touch screen as far as I'm aware. Could be wrong, no doubt somebody will tell me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so there's your front screen. And then if you go to your back and swipe, the front screen will go off, just locked off, and it's just the back screen. Now you can change that, which we'll get into if I swipe down. Now, oh, first of all, let's swipe up again. Remember these settings, these quick change setting things, these are the ones I've selected. And I've showed you, you can change them as you're going through. Oh, I should mention, go back to that, I should mention the slow-mo. That's in slow-mo now. And at the bottom it says 4K, 4K. If I swipe up, in slow motion at 4K, 4K speed, it's awesomely slow it's very slow actually you can change it you can change these resolutions and things but i find the 4k 4k is great and i know when i get this in my kayak and if there's some ducks swimming or get geese and swans taking off and splashing about and it'll look great but yeah so th these are things you can change right now there are your quick shots and talking about quick shots we're straight into the quick shot menu now if you heard when i was pressing the button <coughs> there was a lady's voice telling me camera video or whatever all right if you don't want the voice you simply turn that off there and for me personally i usually leave it off because well i'm rephrase that usually just got the bloody thing going to leave it off because I can only see the voice being useful once again if the camera is on your head if the camera's on your head then I can understand you can't hear you can't see the screen so hearing the lady's voice telling you what you're in will be great but for me not interested right you switch in screen basically when you press your quick switch it, it locks it up so I don't really understand why but that's what it does and these are your selections as you saw I've selected photo video slow-mo didn't bother with time-lapse not interested hyperlapse I'm gonna tell you more about that in a minute I've got some uh, footage to show you playback not important as far as I'm concerned because we've got the playback button just here so right now when you're selecting whatever you're selecting you can do your settings and stuff and customize it as I've just showed you but in here where the little manage you can select for your quick shots and customize them that way it's just another way of doing it all right so you've got all your settings and you can custom you could change 
change um, what you call it aspect ratios and all sorts of stuff like that so that's your quick shot this little sunny is just your screen brightness nothing special uh, uh, you rotate your directional lock for rotating uh, nothing super special all this does is lock the screen but I once again I don't see the point in that because uh, all you do is swipe and it unlocks so yeah it's just a function right the voice right is so you can control the camera with your voice by telling let me just turn that off a minute so it doesn't start doing it you can tell it to record start recording stop recording take photograph or shut down which is a function I probably won't use now where uh, this little function here this little button if I go to the front screen again Oops. if you see on the front screen on the top where there's the SD card and the battery information on the bottom you can see the frame rates it's in like a black bar basically it's in a black bar and you can get rid of that black bar to get a full a full front screen if I can find this here and it was that one and if you click on that and then come out now you've got a full front screen the black bar has gone me I like the black bar so I'm gonna keep it just go back back to the bigger screen so you can see what I'm doing all right back here yeah so I like that little black bar going across okay then uh, this is like your settings function key that's snapshot I'll tell you in a minute about snapshot all right but I've selected video but you can select video or you could select hyperlapse I've set mine on video and I'll tell you what the snapshot is in a moment all right as long as I don't forget this little uh, activation here by the time you read it I've told you it's simply what I was on about locking the screens right if you turn that off whoops turn that off you'll have both screens on constantly but personally you, you don't need it voice control is what I just mentioned select your language we've got English all right turn your voice control on there all right voice commands you'll be able to see what the commands are there you go start recording stop recording take forward blah 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 that's something you have to turn on if that's what you want to use all right scuba diving mode well I, I am bothered researching it because I'm never going to use it but if I click on it there you go if I keep that still you can read that yourself it's basically telling you about what to do somewhat about in scuba diving mode but I'll never be going scuba diving so it doesn't matter wireless connection now this might be interesting all right now you have to connect to the Mimo app all right to get down uh, to get software updates and things like that all right now if I open that up wireless info I'm not going to show you this one because that's got private settings on for me but if you're trying to connect to the Mimo app and it just keeps saying what connect what connect what you need to go in here is to go to your Wi-Fi frequencies and click on 2.4 gigs it will be defaulted to 5.8 now if you're using an older phone like I was it may not handle the 5.8 speed so just default it uh, switch it over to 2.4 gigahertz and then yeah Mimo app will work fine okay uh, that's just resetting so that's now uh, yeah your compression I use H264 right you can go into that change that if you want that's up to you but that's what I use and it's what I've always used all right sound all that's representing is how noisy that woman's voices and when you're hearing dings and dongs and bells and whistles right go down one more grid that's if you want grid lines across the screen you know what that is and I'm not interested anti-flicker Right, if you're in the UK you want that set to 50 Hertz 
Outside the UK, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I think in America it is 60 hertz. But if you're not sure, press auto, and I believe the camera should figure it out for yourself. Naming management is quite cool. You can actually, you know when you put your SD card into the computer and it comes up and it might say DJI file 1 or whatever, you can change the, the name of the folder and the file, like depending on what you've been filming, you might change the name and a file to naked woman in a bath, hope she don't see me. <laughs> right, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, but you can change the name of the file and the folder there if you want to. Personally, I don't see the point. Right. Scan when record. Now, that, that confused me for a minute. I thought scan, scan, scan. It's just uh, cut down abbreviation. Screen off when record. All it is is when you're recording, right, this back screen turns off. It keeps recording, but it's just to say battery. You can have it from three seconds all the way to 10 minutes to never, obviously. I've just left mine on five minutes. So after five minutes of recording, the back screen turns off. If you want to see what's going on the back screen, you just tap it and you're back again. So yeah, so there you go there. Auto power off. What that is, that won't turn off if you're recording. If I just, like now, if I just leave that sat there now, doing nothing, it's not recording, it's not, not doing anything, right? Then in five minutes, it will automatically turn off. Now, you can have this set to 30 seconds, which you, you might just put the camera down, run to the low and come back and it's turned off. So, <laughs> I put mine on five minutes. You can go all the way to 30 minutes, right? I've just left it on five minutes. So that's, oh, we're going down. Uh, LED speaks for itself, lights flashing and stuff like that. Horizon calibration, very important. Place your camera on a dead flat surface, as flat as you can possibly find. Click on that. Follow the on-screen instructions, which basically pre says, uh, press here, don't touch your camera for, I think it's 30 seconds, and it calibrates the horizon to keep it all flat. Uh, moving down, continue your last live stream, speak for itself if you're live streaming, and you, uh, you stop, basically, continue where you la left off with your last live stream. Now, I haven't read into that. I haven't read the manual about that because... I can't see myself live streaming with this camera, so it's not something I've looked into, to be honest. Right. Language speaks for itself, English, date and time. Format's important when you put your SD card in. Scroll down to the bottom of the settings, click on that, format your SD card. Very, very important. Factory resets, not interested. Anything else? Oh, device information speaks for itself, it'll tell you about the device. Um, oh, this license information at the bottom. Right, this is all legal requirements and information. It's quite interesting. You want to read that yourself. But uh, if we come out of there, what was the one I was going to talk to you about? I can't remember now. I said I'll come back to it. Is it on? I can't remember for the life of me. Was it in the settings? Snapshot, that was it, that was it, snapshot. Right, we'll move on to snapshot now. What the hell is snapshot? Well, as you see, I've got mine set on video, all right? So if we come out, all right, and what I'm gonna do is turn the camera off. All right, which is the button on the side, press and hold it for a few seconds, turn the camera off. Now, snapshot is quite cool, actually, all right? How many times have we been in a situation where you're out, something happens, you reach for your camera, your camera's off. So you turn your camera on, then you press the record button, and by the time you've turned your camera on, press the record button, whatever's happening has gone. All right? The dinosaur has run around the corner and you can't see it anymore, so you don't get to film it, so you don't get to be rich and famous. All right? Well, with this quick shot, uh, snapshot thing all you do is remember that's your power button to power it on to do all your functions all this is it's quick video recording and nothing else all right 
you press it and it will instantly within one second start recording all right and I'll show you all right I'm gonna press and then watch I'm pressed it's recording as it one second it is now recording right. I hope you can see in the top left you'll see the countdown but it is now recording that quick it was that quick and then if I press it again to stop recording all right you got the option to, it will automatically turn off in three seconds or you can touch the screen and now it's turning off now I've got three seconds if I tap the screen which I didn't if I tap the screen it has stayed on and then I can continue so in a way that's a well it's not a way that's amazing because like I say how many times have we been in situations where summer happens and by the time you turn your camera on land it up press record you're screwed and even sometimes all right you've turned your camera on press record and it's took a picture you got it on photo mode and you wanted to start videoing so that is an amazing function i really do like that that is one function i really really do enjoy right oh excuse me <coughs> the microphone all right the built-in microphone i've done a couple of tests because DJI has been really good, all right? You can actually connect any USB-C microphone in there. Any, even the one I'm using right now I could use. All right? Unlike GoPro where you have to use this special connector thing from them, but any USB-C microphone now I've gone out and bought one it was on a uh, I think it was 11 pound 12 pound well it's on offer now for about eight quid on eBay all right I'll show you a picture and I'll also leave a link in the video description if you want to go get one because it works really well and it's just an external microphone you can plug in and you clip it on your shirt that being said, the built-in microphone works well, amazing too. All right, so why would you want the clip-on one? Well, I'll tell you why. Good question. I'll answer it for you. With the clip-on microphone, the wireless clip-on microphone, you don't have to be that close to the camera. I did a test with this cheap, cheap, all right, like I said, about 11, 12 quid, but on offer now for about eight and then, all right, I was about 30 foot away and it still picked up my voice great but uh, I also went to the park and I did a quick walkabout sound test using this microphone here and then I tried the clip on one because it was my first time trying it just to see how it went and I'll let you do I'll let you hear both of them first and then I'll come back and uh, show you some footage of that hyper smooth because that's also another function so let's just do a jump shot and uh, listen to the microphone test. But I've come out to do a sound test. I'm going to do it two ways. I'm testing this out now on, obviously, just the camera. I'm on the selfie stick and it's not quite full. I'd say it's about three quarters, about a metre, because it's a metre and a half altogether. So it's about a metre at the moment. But I have got in my possession one of them plug-in microphones all right but it'll be a good test all right <laughs> i got it off ebay it was only 12 quid now right and i'm back right so i'm using this clip-on microphone now like i said it was only a cheap little 12 quid thing from ebay but i wanted to see if it's any good i mean the next couple of minutes could be a complete waste of time because you might not be able to hear me at all. I don't know. All right. right then, so that's your microphone test. Uh, it was a little bit windy out there, but it pretty damn good, right? And as you saw, that little clip-on microphone as well, that little wireless clip-on mic, it was great, and it was so bloody cheap. Right, let's just turn this back on again because there's something I wanted to... It turns on so fast, so fast. Something else I wanted to tell you. All right. This setting over here, hyperlapse, hyperspeed, right? You can set it all the way up to times 30. 
Alright, and it does everything for you. You start recording, press the record button, and it basically does everything. It just takes all the shots, put it together, and you got your video. So let's see what it looks like at times two. Yeah, pretty damn fast that, isn't it? Well, I did actually test it at, excuse me, <coughs> I did actually test it at times 10 as well. So don't blink, let's see what this is like. And yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? That times 10. I, I can see me having fun with this on the kayak. <laughs> you can almost use your imaginations. And you mount this on a jet, right? At times 2. It, it, footage will look amazing. Well, I did try it for the hell of it at times 30. Now, whatever you do, right? Don't blink. Do not blink. You'll miss it. Let's see what times 30 looks like. Yeah, awesome, right? Absolutely awesome. Great little gimmicky, functiony thing. I love it. But yeah, now I think, I believe that's every single thing. I don't think I've missed anything. Or if I have, turn off. If I have, there's your zoom. I keep saying zoom out. I'm not zooming out. I'm lifting the bloody tripod mount up and down. <laughs> This camera that I'm using though has got a zoom. Alright, but to be honest, it's not great. Alright, so I believe that's absolutely everything. So I'm going to go over to my chair now, sit comfortably. Alright, I'm going to give you my final thoughts about it. And I'm also going to tell you whether you should buy one or not. Or maybe you might want to buy some 200 odd quid cheaper. Alright, like the camera I'm filming with right now. Alright. All depends what you plan on doing and I'll also give you my seven reasons if you haven't already guessed them why this is a lot better than anything else on the market at the moment including the new GoPro 11 black because right, there's a few things I haven't mentioned about this camera like the price right the overheating which it does not overheat you can stick it in a fridge freezer it will still keep working you can, so you can use it in really cold conditions there's loads of things I haven't mentioned about this camera as yet so let's just go sit down and have a chat and I'll tell you my final thoughts okay jump shot all right then final thoughts so to speak <coughs> if you see me keep glancing over there <laughs> i've got a list all right because uh, i've got terrible memory 
Final thoughts. Do I like it? No, I love it. I, have I found anything I don't like about it? Yes, but only one. Oh, bloody postman. Perfect timing. That was postman. <laughs> I, I, I'd ordered this yesterday off Amazon. What it is, well, you know what it is. It's a bloody baseball cap. It's a hat. But it has a built-in adapter right, for you to clip on your cameras. It's all bolted in. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that I had like Velcro on or whatever, but no, it's actually connected in. You get me? So you, you'd literally just mount your camera. Now, the reason why I, I wanted one, right, I thought straight away for when I'm flying my planes, it, you know what I mean? I can have that because that's better quality camera footage. And you know what I mean? So yeah, so I, I thought, yeah, it. It's a gimmick, I might only use it three or four times a year, might not use it that much or whatever, but uh, yeah, I thought, that'll do me, that's cool, mount the camera on. So there you go, little caveat. If you're interested, I'll tell you what, I'll, somebody will ask, I'll leave a link in the video description to this at Amazon, because right, I found it by accident while I was looking around yesterday, complete accident. Anyway, yeah, getting back, I have completely and utterly lost my train of thought. So, what was I talking about? Come on, tell me. Uh, the camera, yeah. Oh, something I didn't like. That was it. Some, well, it's not a case of not liking. Right? Some, I wish, two little things I wish they could have improved. The first one, right? I've got a little case. Right? I'm a bugger for cases. I order things, right? drones, quads or whatever, and I always have to buy cases and stuff, but I've got loads of cases piled up, but I've got a little case for it, but it'd be nice if it came with some sort of lens protector cover, you know what I mean, just a, a cover that goes over the lens, so that, that would be nice, but maybe I'm being picky. Also, the magnets, which are amazing, the magnets are amazing when they're clipped on, it'd be nice now, because the magnets, this is probably impossible because of polarity, right? But it would be nice if you could unclip the magnet, just turn the camera straight round and clip it back in again. Now, you can't do that because the magnets push away from the cells. I think you saw that earlier in the video. Now, why, why would that be nice? Simply because, say you're in the car, right? different scenarios, motorbikes, whatever, but say you're in a car and you've got this camera mounted right, and you're driving down or whatever and something happens, you stop your car, you stop your car, you could just unclip, turn it around, clip it back in, right, start your journey again and chat away and discuss and talk about vlog, whatever, right, whereas at the moment what you need to do is have an adapter that spins. Now I do have one of them, but there's still a bit of a pain. You have to unscrew the bottom bit, turn it round, screw it all. It, it's a little bit of a pain. So it would have been nice if somehow the magnet, you could just unplug, turn around and plug back in. But that's probably never gonna happen because of uh, the polarity of magnets. They don't work like that. But that would have been nice. But they're the only two real downsides I could come across. Right? And, you know, I can't really, really think of how well. Yeah, there was something else. Right, this little attachment here for where you plug in your USB. Uh, there, your USB cable right, for when you're downloading onto your computer or charging or whatever. But if you plug in one of them external microphones in that I talked about, now what you need to do is you slide this off, that lifts up, and you can plug in your, your microphone. If you've got a right angle, you see, I, I've got a right angle adapter. You see, now if not, what you need to do is actually you, you, you turn this and keep, keep pulling it till it, for want of a better word, snaps off. All right? And then you plug in the external microphone, you do whatever it is you're doing, and then you connect this back on again. Now, this end here 
it's it's all well made but it's only plastic and i reckon taking that on and off after a while could lose its waterproof uh, integrity and to be honest it's a little bit on the tricky side getting the bloody thing back on again i'll do that later when i've got my glasses i haven't got my glasses on but yeah it's a little bit awkward getting it back on again but i reckon after a while taking that on taking it off taking it on taking it will it still remain waterproof i don't know it would have been nice if somehow either that lifted up a lot further so you could fit everything in or it slid round or or somewhat you get me all right but that's the only downside all right I, I think it's an awesome camera it really is an awesome camera i haven't showed you loads of footage that will be coming in the future you'll um you'll see that mounted on my kayak you'll get to see proper actual footage and stuff like that and uh other things you'll get to see footage from it and if you go on youtube there's plenty of people filming with them and stuff like that so you'll get to see footage now before i go on to this list all right about seven reasons why this is the best camera out at the moment well seven reasons why it's definitely better than the gopro 11 black all right seven good reasons as well all right and one caveat i suppose at the bottom right. i should mention right at the beginning of this video i showed you the box of the camera i'm filming with right now all right the uh sf 530 sephora i still can't pronounce that i've done a video review about this camera all right the sephora 530 i'll leave link in the description to that because it's it's a couple of hundred quid cheaper now it's not waterproof all right it's it hasn't got any special functions but for shooting 4k video it's an awesome little camera it really is and depend as an action camera not that great because the stabilization is not fantastic to be honest right so it has got anti-stabilization built in i mean on my kayak wobbling about my kayak using this camera uh, it works amazingly right but i reckon if you put mounted it on a motorbike or a trial bike same thing but on a motorbike you, you'd have problems you know what i mean so but it's an awesome camera i'm going to leave the review to this camera all right in the video description all right just in case you're after a really good camera at a really good price it is about about a hundred pounds so it's like 300 pounds cheaper than the combo set uh, so it is a good camera okay right uh, there was one more thing another reason why i really like this camera which i didn't mention this is actually going to replace three cameras of mine at the moment right when i go out of my kayak i need three cameras with me all right that one i'm filming with right now I do all my main shooting with but it's not waterproof so it's in a waterproof case sat in front of my boat doing all the filming all right but because it's in a waterproof case if i turn the camera around and i want to talk you can't hear me because it's in a water and i can't connect an external microphone to it because it's in a waterproof case all uh, right so what i need to do is i have another camera my cap cam a little mobius camera on top of my cap i wear and i try and do the old clapperboard link up the speech and the sound with my cap cam and then edit them put them together so with this being waterproof all right i only need the one camera for filming and then i can turn it around point it at me and uh, i don't i don't need the second camera for the sound because it's two in one also i take a third camera to shove underwater at times to try and get some video footage of the fish or whatever and that's another camera i have 
in a waterproof case on a, a, a selfie stick that I, I dig in, dig in, that I put, dig in, that I put in the river, uh, because if I use that camera, by the time I've unscrewed all the bolts and the nuts and the pieces and I screwed it onto the selfies, you don't really want to be messing about like that in a kayak. You can, you can easily drop stuff and it's a lot of messing. But with this, I'll just click under the magnet, click it straight onto the selfie stick, under the water, here you go. So that's three cameras rather than, one camera I should say, rather than taking three cameras when I go out on my uh, kayak. So that's something else I really do like. That I only thought about yesterday. That only popped up into my head yesterday. I thought, oh yeah, I won't need to take all my bloody cameras with me. I won't have to charge up three lots of batteries and get or buy loads of SD cards, which I already have done, but too late. Alright, so anyhow, my I'm gonna call it my final thought. Seven reasons why this is better why this camera is better than the new GoPro 11 alright and we're gonna start at the top and the most important reason <coughs> and considering all the functions I'm starting with some of what some people might think that's not the most important but I think it is the price if you buy this standard where you get the camera and one battery it's about 300 quid if you buy the GoPro 11 Black standard with just the camera and one battery, £500! £500! So the £200 cheaper. Right? And considering if we move on to number two on the list, this will overheat. This camera will not overheat. There has been numerous tests of this camera and it does not overheat. You can leave it on constantly. The, f the only thing that will happen is if you happen to want your screen on constantly, which I showed you, I man on a five minute time. After five minutes, my screen turns off. <coughs> and if I want to see what's on the screen, I just tap it and it comes back on again. But if you had your screen on constantly, after about an hour, the screen just turns off on this. It keeps recording. It doesn't overheat and shut down. It keeps recording. Whereas the GoPro 11, at anywhere between 15 minutes to 30 minutes, it just dies, shuts off. And you have to turn it off, pull the battery out, put the battery back in again, turn it back on again, basically let it cool down. So this will not overheat. All right. GoPro 11 does overheat. Now, some people will say, yeah, but you don't need to have an action camera running for more than 10 minutes at a time. The action can Well, don't forget, being in a kayak is an active sport. All right? And sometimes I have my cameras, even this little one, sometimes I have my cameras running just constantly for four hours. Okay. The battery runs out so you have to change back because i take batteries with me right and i'll be taking batteries with me for this because i know one battery right won't be good enough for in the kayak which actually oh talk about a link moves me on to batteries right this will last at 4k 30 for two hours the battery two hours at 4k 30 right <coughs> the GoPro 11 right, is dying after less than an hour. I'll be I'll be generous. I'll say an hour. All right, the battery is dead within an hour. Whereas this will last two hours at 4K 30. All right, but I still take more batteries with me. All right, because I'm on the water more than two hours. That was a good link, wasn't it? So yeah, 60 minutes battery life better than the GoPro 11. And seeing as we're still on batteries, we'll move on again. All right. These links are great, you know. Should be an anchor man. <laughs> Should have an anchor dad around me some of you thinking a chuck dim river. Yeah, uh, charging the batteries. You probably heard about this because it really is a big selling point. To charge one of the batteries from empty, empty empty right to 80 percent fully 80 percent charge you can't be 80 percent fully 80 percent charge takes 18 minutes 
18 minutes to get from empty to 80%. Uh, and if you're charging all three batteries, which I did, because I, I got to the, the combo set, comes with three batteries, charge all three batteries from empty takes about an hour. In fact, that's a lie. It was about an hour and 10 minutes. All right, but all three batteries. And they're to fully charged, 100% charged. But yeah, 80% charge in 18 minutes. That is just amazing. All right, and what's the GoPro? For charging up one battery could take you about an hour and a half. Okay, so once again, this beats the GoPro. Don't worry, GoPro fans. I know what you're all screaming at me. All right. 8 bit, 8 bit. I know, I'm getting to it. All right. Something else the GoPro doesn't have that this has. The touch screens. Two touch screens. Dual touch screens. The front's a touch screen and the back's a touch screen. Now on the GoPro, it's just the back. The front is not a touch screen. This will also work amazingly when wet. You go swimming with it, right? It gets all wet, the touch screen still works. I don't mean underwater, the touch screen won't work underwater. Right? But you stick your head up out the water, you change your settings and dive back down again and the touch screen still works great. So something else. And I think that's the lot. Right? Oh, number seven. The awesome, I've wrote this, the awesome, fantastic, magnetic mounting system. That's actually raw. <laughs> the awesome, fantastic, magnetic mounting system. Yeah, I mean, that, I don't have to say anything else. Yet you all know the magnetic mounting system is amazing. Now, okay then, I've been seeing this is better than the GoPro 11, and I know some of you have been screaming at me. Let's just get the elephant out of the room. Go on, sort off. The GoPro 11 has 10 bit colour. The DJI Osmo Action 3 has 8 bit colour. What's that mean in case you don't know? 8 bit colour is about 16 million bits of colour it can, for want of a better word, recognise, pick up, deal with. Whereas a 10 bit, what the GoPro 11 has, uh, is about a billion. I oh, know, crazy numbers, isn't it? About a billion bits of colour it can recognise. So the picture quality is a little bit better. Right? Oh, happy GoPro fans, I know you screaming it. It's the only one thing they've got, you see. That's the one thing they've got. And unfortunately, they're not going to have that for long, are they? Because DJI, they might have already done it by the time you see this video, DJI are putting out a software update or a firmware update, right? Increasing from 8 bit to 10 bit. So then GoPro is completely screwed because that's the only thing they had. But you wish you never bought that GoPro now for a freaking 500 quid, do you? You bought it because it had 10 bit, didn't you? That's why you bought it, 10 bit. Well, <laughs> should have saved yourself 200 quid. Get 10 bit on this now. <coughs> uh, I'm going to have to end this video because I need to go take my medication. You may have guessed that. So to sum up, it's awesome. Uh, if, you, if you're tired between the GoPro and this, buy this. If you're after a really good top of the range, top of the range action cam, buy this. If you're after a, a really decent action cam for doing things like I'm doing now, nothing too special, or like just, I mean, I've used this on my kayak, this S Sephora SF530 on my kayak, and the image quality is outstanding, okay? And they're about 100 quid, something like that. I'll leave a link to the video I did about this one, right? And I think there's a link to the actual camera in that video, if I remember. But this video is really about this. I am not going to leave you a link. I I'm not going to leave you a link to this because they're all over the place. Shop around, all right? A lot of them now right, are on pre-order because they're selling out fast. They are selling out fast, all right? You can still buy the GoPro 11. <laughs> 
but these are selling out fast all right so uh shop around amazon's got home ebay's got home uh wex photography has got them there's shop around in other words okay then pilots and paddlers this is turning to one hell of a long video i don't know how many of you is going to watch this all the way to the end if you do hey hey well done if you sat around and watched this entire video oh my god i'm impressed i really am impressed and you get two thumbs up from me but uh if you didn't and you turned it off already because you got bored after five minutes you won't be seeing this so yeah we shouldn't have turned it off you prat yeah you can get two of them that's for turning it off okay then dgi will not like that okay then uh, that's from me now do with dgi me giving you the finger <laughs> all right uh, i'm gonna leave it there pilots and paddlers and i hope you like this review long-winded but i wanted to cover all the functions and how to access them because nobody well maybe people are now but the videos i found it was a case of oh yeah and you can change this and you can but they weren't actually showing you how to get into how to do it so that's what i wanted to do any questions please just ask just ask in the comments any questions you've got feel free and i will do my best to answer them and yeah you'll be seeing plenty of footage coming up from this camera on both of my channels so uh watch out for it and uh i'll just say thanks for watching if you stuck around to the end very much appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up right uh, and if you didn't like this video if you really hated it right i i understand if you give me a thumbs up so j just do that okay <laughs> right i'm gonna go take that medication now oh god i need it right then uh, i'll catch you next time thanks for watching and uh, let me know let me know are you gopro or are you dji action 3 let me know tell me in the comments right i'll catch you later cheers